This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Hello my goblins and ghouls, my name is Steven. Today is the day we dive deep into the pool of open source software. Up until this point, everything with Index has been modeled in Fusion 360, which is an awesome CAD package. But today, we switch to FreeCAD. Now there's a lot of reasons that I'm doing this, but here's the long and short of it. One, open source software is awesome. Fusion recently changed a lot of how their whole licensing stuff works, and that's kind of spooky. And I want to double down on a CAD package I know is always going to be available for me and anyone that wants to contribute to the project forever on any platform. Two, Fusion is kind of tricky to share the design in a way that isn't built into their whole cloud ecosystem. You can technically export steps or like a weird packaged archive Fusion 360 thing, but that's really annoying for tracking versions and small changes. FreeCAD saves the file locally and you can even track it in Git. Even though it's a binary and Git isn't really meant to do that, it's still way better than trying to like share an archive file. That's just a pain in the butt. Now, if I was gonna go ahead and remodel the entire machine from scratch, might as well fix all the stuff that I don't like about it in the process. And there are things that I don't like about it. <laughs> For example, all of the entries in the machine use four rollers. This is over constrained and it makes it incredibly hard to tension these really well and keep them tensioned throughout the use of the machine. As a few of you have pointed out, the vacuum pump is mounted directly next to the up-facing camera. So when it turns on, it's gonna shake the whole camera all over the place and get a really bad image capture. And then this, our cable management with this whole umbilical cord attempt and some kind of printed cable chain has not worked out. So with those improvements in mind, let's pop in a FreeCAD, model the entire machine all over again, and print the whole gosh darn thing. All right, we've got the frame built up and the wide gantry on here. There is one really, really big improvement to this whole thing so far, which is the tensioning for the gantries. I mentioned this earlier on, but there were four rollers per gantry, which was over constrained, and you had one roller that didn't technically have to be there. It also was incredibly hard to tension it, and all you could really do was squeeze it as hard as you could, and then try and tighten the bolt and hope that it would hold that tension. It was a nightmare. This is so much better. So we've got the two rollers, like usual, on the top, which are rigidly mounted. There's no adjustment there at all. And then on the bottom, there's only one roller in the center. And this roller has two small M3 screws on the bottom with a captive nut on either side. And you can use those to adjust how far up the bolt that holds the bottom railer goes, and therefore adjust your tension really, really precisely on both sides. So now no matter how hard I wrench on this thing, it's not going to get loose. It will never unscrew these tensioning bolts at the bottom. It's just going to hold dead fast. Plus, I also added an entire secondary panel to help keep the bolts super perpendicular to the rail. On the last pass, there was only one print that was part of the gantry, and if you look really close, it's actually bowed a little bit as I tried to tension things the part itself slowly started to kind of bow and bend and warp and then detension on the rail, so it really wasn't very stable. It is totally worth just printing out another part that holds everything super solid 
makes a world of difference. So this thing is just not wiggling at all now. It's so much better. I wish I did this months ago. Let's move on to the X Gantry. Alright, we got all the gantries on here. It is looking super nice and it feels so much better and so much more stable and I'm so happy. Now you might have noticed that there's a bunch of these weird thingies sticking out- oh you can't even see it. Things sticking out of the top of certain parts of this and these are to facilitate umbilicals. In the last mechanical version I had one umbilical cord going from the left foot to the head to handle the pneumatics and like the limit switch and the two motors that are on this gantry here. And then I tried to use a 3D printed cable chain going to the X or er, X motor on the Y gantry. And that got in the way of where a conveyor belt will ultimately go. And it was just really messy and got in the way and it was just really bad. So this time I'm trying a two umbilical cord approach, both from the bottom left corner, which is like the central hub for the whole machine. The motherboard is mounted in that corner. Everything kind of revolves around that one point. So from here, whoop, One's gonna go out to the Y gantry for the X axis, the limit switch there, and then the other one is gonna go out to the head for all the stuff running on the head along with pneumatics. The main reason this didn't work super well for me last time is because my mounting for it was so poopy. It was so poopy. I just had like one tiny little grip and it would just like wob all over the place. But this time I've given them a lot of height so we should be able to zip tie them on in two specific locations and it will stay upright the whole time. We've kind of defined it to stick out in an axis as opposed to just a point where it can rotate. So now I'm gonna do one of my favorite parts of this whole thing and manage all the cables, all the wires, get all the umbilical cord stuff hooked up. Oh, it's gonna be so good. so nice and neat and organized. I designed these little parts that are used to grip a cable down onto the peak array and being able to just decide where a cable is gonna go somewhere on this place helps organize stuff so much. I also designed this little clip which holds cables kind of inside and right outside of the aluminum extrusion. The only time those are really necessary is for the Y motors. They have to, that long cable that travels the whole way back. But for those, it keeps everything so neat. Now the last part that needs to toss on here is the pump mount. And this is it. I know it looks pretty weird, but with a couple rubber bands, it's got like a shock mount to it. So even when this thing is running like crazy and shaking around, it's not actually gonna shake a physical rigid part that's attached to the machine, so it shouldn't shake around the camera at all. It'll just vibrate being suspended with these rubber bands. <laughs> Originally I was looking at getting those kind of shock mount things you can buy for a drone controller, so it doesn't see all the crazy high frequency movement of the motor spinning around and whatever else the drone ultimately is exposed to, but it was hard to find a good solid standard on those. Everyone has rubber bands. So now I'm going to add the final piece and we'll give it a test.
So far, all the CAD improvements that I made have made such a difference in how this thing works. All the gantries are so much more stable with this whole new tensioning scheme that I'm using. The umbilical cables are actually working really, really well, and we can't even see it anymore. I can go the full extent of the entire area where the head can move and the umbilical cables move along just fine. <laughs> And the vacuum pump mount worked out so well, I didn't get any weird wobbles or shaking at all during my image capture of the actual part. It actually does a really good job of isolating the vibration. Even if you grab the panel right next to the pump or even the mount, you can't feel anything. The rubber bands absorb all of that pretty easily, so that's fantastic. So I went in and got OpenPMP all reconfigured for this new setup. It's able to find a strip feeder, which I just have set up for now until RS-45 gets rolled into Marlin. And it knows where the board is, places all the parts, it's pretty darn good. The stuff that still really needs to happen is all the pipeline tuning for the vision. So because there's two cameras on here, it's gonna make it a lot easier for the machine to know exactly where the part is located on the tip and exactly where it is in the feeder. And it's gonna make it a lot easier to get just insane precision with relatively inexpensive parts by using the vision aspect to kind of make up for it. So there's still a good chunk of work to do there. The placement wasn't super precise. I also have that same problem where there isn't paste or sticky tape. So they hop around a little bit once they get placed. But when they're going down, they're pretty close and vision's just gonna make it that much tighter. So yeah, I mean, it places parts and like runs jobs. And once feeders are able to talk back to OpenPMP through the motherboard, then they'll all be able to be all set up on the front rail and it'll be able to pull from a whole bunch of different parts instead of just one tiny little strip feeder I have set up. And it'll be able to use a bunch of parts and whip around and pick a bunch of different things and then support for a second nozzle and then paste and conveyor belts and blah, 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 just goes on from there. But now of course the main point of remodeling everything in FreeCAD is that now it's all tracked in Git, which took so long. I tried to watch tutorials like I showed at the beginning. I just couldn't do it and I just dove in and fought my way there, it was a struggle. But we got there. You can pull them down right now, open up in FreeCAD, make edits. If you make a change you think is great, you can file a PR, roll it back into the project. Now everything is able to accept feedback from you all. All right, that's it for this one. I have a Patreon, so if you'd like to help support me and projects like The Index, there's a link in the description where you can become a patron. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. But before I go, I want to thank this video sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay has consistently made all of the boards for this project, and every single gosh darn time they have come out so wonderful. If I have the time, I usually try and get the matte black with the gold finish because it always looks really, really, really good. But if I need something super quick, like 24 hours, it's already out the door and it's at DHL on the way to me. I go with their normal green solder mask and the hassle uh, pad coating, and they just crank through that. They have insanely good prices. The quality of the boards is really, really nice. If you're looking for a board shop, I highly recommend PCBWay. Thank you so much to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. You done good. You done good, kid. Proud of you. Okay, if you are watching this footage, it means this went successfully, but right now my camera is in like 400 pieces. I dropped my camera onto the ground, lens first, and now it won't change zoom. So I have it all broken apart.